this is yours. There you go. Here they are, everybody. Let's, let's start with me. Go down the way you know who they are. But they'll introduce themselves. It's on. Hello, everybody. Jason Bergberg playing Little John. I am Lee Ehrenberg. I play Grumpy. Play Wendy. Woo! Maria. Hi, everyone. I'm Rebecca Bader, and I play the Wicked Witch. Hello, I'm Sean McGuire, and I play Robin Hood. Do you have any idea how large a, a success this show was going to be, when, when, especially the, the few of you here that, that began with the show, how big it was going to be? No. <laughs> this is working, right? Okay. No, it is. Can you, can you give, us, give us a little bit in the, in the side clothes, that'd be great. Um, I had no idea, but I don't want to be mindful, I was a bit cynic. My seventh show, and a lot of my shows only went 13 episodes. So I think this is such a unique show, and the concept is just unlike any other. That I thought, okay, this is probably going to last 13 episodes, but you know, like every other show, that's so great. Um, but it didn't. And now we're starting our fourth season, and it's unbelievable. And it's like, Um, real quick, just a, a matter of business. If you are uh, taking a photograph and using slash photography, if you could cool it, <laughs> it's like a disco up here. Uh, so we'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, when you, and, and each one of you has a very iconic character, uh, what were your thoughts upon assuming one of these classic characters uh, that that was either in different different media and different. I mean, I must say that one of the most amazing things about really our writers, because great television is about great writers. You need 22 great quality scripts for a season, and one of the great things that our writers did is they took the uh, qualities of the characters that everyone already loved about the fairy tale world and didn't change that saying to the audience these are your fa these are your fairy tale characters but we're just going to change the in between points right so when you read uh, these scripts you have the established kind of stuff about the character but for example my dude the original grumpy is a misogynist he's like i don't like women well i like women right? <laughs> I was, I was happy that my dude, the reason that he became, say, grumpy is because he had his heart broken, you know? And truly, right? And they, they give us that. And when you get that to play with as an actor, it gives you somewhere to go. So I don't play the iconic character. I play the character that's written in these pages. And then if, the, if this audience comes to me and says, wow, you're, you're hitting all the notes, well then, thanks. Because if you set out to do like, if you set out to do something like match a legendary film, I mean you got no hope in hell. <laughs> so you better not even try. Uh, on, on that note about about uh, the reason why he's grumpy, and, and everyone that has either that is a villain or is grumpy or is uh, wicked, there is a reason, and the writers have given you. Hardcore reasons of why you are that way. That did that. I'm. I'm assuming it did nothing but help you create that character, help you build that character. Yeah, I think you know, if I had just been wicked and horrible the whole time, then it's very one note and very flat. I think one thing I really appreciated with you know the writers is that they actually showed my backstory and showed all the reasoning as to why 
I had it out for the evil queen and why I was being so horrible to everybody and trying to terrorise everyone's favourite characters. And I think if they hadn't done me the justice of actually telling everybody why I'd become so dreadful, it would have been one note and just I just would have been horrible. So I'm really, really grateful to them that they gave me sort of a well-rounded character to play to show that vulnerability and all of that rather than just a one-note villain. This had lots of colours and vulnerability and emotion and it was just much more fun for me to play. I was really grateful for that. And, and a lot of them. Yeah. yeah! The reasons behind why you are, your character is evil uh, kind of came in drifts and drafts along the way. Uh, I, I understand that you have a very psychological approach to your, to your character. Uh, what conversations did you have with the writers as you're, as you're going along? Did they give you information that this is, this is why, or did it just come as the script came? Um. Well, we did have a, a conversation in the beginning, but one of their biggest notes was this is a human being. This isn't, it is an iconic character, the evil queen. But that can be very theatrical, over-traumatized. She's a real person. And, and that's where I started. And that really informed so much. And that's why I was able to bring this humanity, this vulnerability. She's so dynamic, complex. Um, and I think it was a marriage between what I brought and the writers created, producers. Um, and we found this character together. So it was... Uh, but it is, it is one of the things that these guys love, and especially about your character, is that we fucking believe you. <laughs> Additional challenge of being uh, one of the couple characters that knew what was going on the whole time, especially in the first season. Well, that's actually I didn't. Um, I didn't know if or where they were going to go, so I would give them options. I would do three different takes and let them choose. And so that's that's what I did because I had no idea. They wouldn't tell me anything, and I like not knowing. Because it keeps it spontaneous, and I'm in the moment, and I'm experiencing it as, you know, with the audience. So I, I don't really hate spoilers. So don't ask me any questions, because I won't. Well, you can ask me questions, but don't ask me. Well, what's going to happen? Because honestly, I don't know. Um, you guys haven't received script one of season yeah. four yet. No, we'll get it's that. It's called secret, man. <laughs> oh yeah, you send our lives away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really, um, we. Probably won't get that script until about the week prior. Yeah. Well, you can have lunch with the producers and kind of pick their brains, but they don't tell you much. They really don't. Uh, let, let's get, we started at the beginning, we'll go to the end, and we'll go back and talk about audition and, and how you got the job. But, let's talk about Frozen. <laughs> Just, just to skip ahead, did you know, did they tell you that that was the tag, or was that top secret until it aired? What did, what did you know, and what can you tell us about your knowledge? That, that wasn't even in the script. It wasn't. And that's what they do every finale, as they keep it top secret, even from the cast. So we have no idea. Yeah, and it wasn't on the call sheet either. No, it wasn't on the call sheet. It was like, I only knew that they were doing a hair test or some new character that was coming for the, you know, for the fourth season. And I had no idea who it was. I didn't know anything until I watched the finale. I learned the same time I was here. I had a bet with myself that it was Olympus, that we were going to Olympus and I saw the blue was like, Hades. Hades! <laughs> Hades! <laughs> That was actually one of the cool things because we had that screening. We do a screening at the end of the year where they'll show the finale and we all get together and it's at the agency of the producers. And um, 
Steve Perlman, who's the executive producer, he's kind of the one that follows your Twitter. And he's the one looking for any like gaps if you like spoil something. He was stoked because he was watching. He's like I do. I like watch the East Coast feed on my Twitter. Like I can judge by what you say about the different characters, whether you like my line or whether you like what's going down. But he was stoked. He's like there was not one spoiler about that. And that's tough in this day and age to actually like even surprise us or surprise the audience. It's tough to do. But our crew is really good at keeping secrets too. Because they're kind of in the know. Because we need the hair person to do the hair tests. We need Eduardo Castro to create the costume. So some people know, but they really honor the secrecy, which I think is really cool. And um, That was yeah. the same thing with like Bex's character. Right, like before you got there, the whole makeup test, the whole green thing, and that was like, that was super secret, because there's people that'll watch on the set that are fans, right? Some of the people will come up and check it out, so you have to be careful, because you don't want them to be spoiled either. I had, to do, I had to do my hair and makeup test outside, because I needed to be near where they were shooting. So they were all shooting a scene outside by a pond somewhere, so I had to go to them for it to be videoed, for it to be emailed to LA, for everyone to sign off on my green face. <laughs> so I came out of the hair and makeup trailer with, you know, all the rich costume on, the green skin and the nails and everything, and they were like, okay, bend down. I'm like, for what? <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> Not, you know, this is a new job, interesting. And they draped a blanket over the top of my head. And I'm like, what's with the blanket? A bit weird. Then they like hustled me into a van and I had to bend down and under a blanket. I'm like, where are we going? What's going on? I'm a little bit confused. But I just went with it, what are you gonna do? They're paying me. So off we go in a van and I'm under a blanket and then we got to a lake and I'm still under the blanket and it's muddy. I'm like sitting in the mud, and they had made this like black tent for me, and then I get in the tent, and then everybody was hiding, like, welcome to the test! I'm like, oh, you know, where they were taking me, I was very confused. <laughs> but everything was so top secret, that was definitely the best secret I've ever, ever had. I couldn't even tell my mum and dad, my mum was so annoyed. Like, come on, tell me I'm your mum, I'm like, I'm not doing it, mate. So I didn't tell anyone. Came out, then I, I love Twitter and I love tweeting. So when it finally came out, like, oh my God, I'm the Wicked Witch. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what are some of your favorite moments from the show? The shooting, uh, some of your favorite scenes. I, I really liked. Lana and I had a scene we were right over there. Right, right, right before the. Uh, <laughs> Thing that everyone got upset about. Um, <laughs> obviously, it's not made Marion's fault she came back to life, it really isn't. Um, but we had a, we, you know, we have a lot to shoot. It's like shooting a mini movie every week, and so we, we don't have an awful lot of time to indulge ourselves in terms of, oh, let me try it this way. We have to just shoot and move and shoot and move. But um, Lana and I had a, a really sweet scene, uh, I think, in the penultimate episode where we had a little picnic by the fire. <laughs> We, uh, we had a great director, his name was Kate Brom, yeah, um, and we just, for some reason we had a, a lot of time that day and we really had an opportunity to kind of play it out and, and try it different ways and Lana, uh, not that it's a surprise to most of you, is an incredible actress and she every time the tape, she did it a different way with the same lines and I, I as a fan, was sitting there going, wow, this is really impressive. I was like, she, I should probably do some acting as well. <laughs> so they go, oh, she's really good. <laughs> my line, my line, my line. Um, so that was just a good kisser too, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's a kisser as well, yeah. A bonus. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was on my favorite. <laughs> uh, what happened? Oh, one of my favorite scenes was at the beginning of 319, and I loved, loved, loved with all my heart being on my broomstick. I loved it. I loved it. They, they, they got a body double for me, you know, same heart, same height, same hair, they dressed her up the same, and they were going to put her on my broomstick. And I'm like, uh, no. And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, we didn't know you would do it. I'm like, I want to do it. So I kicked her off. I got on, and they put a harness on and everything, 
know, the, the studio ceilings are so high, but there was this one scene at the beginning of 319, so I come from up in the air and came swooping down through the air, jumped off my broomstick in the air, and everybody, all of these guys were in the scene, and then sort of landed and floated and carried on talking. And it was just one of these moments where I'm like, this is my life. <laughs> I'm a wiki witch, I'm on a broomstick, I'm working with all of these talented people and it's just in that moment I have never felt so blessed and so lucky and I'll never forget that for the rest of my life. beautiful green woman on the planet. Um, I love working with everyone here but I'm going to take us back to season one. Second episode. Working with Robert Carlyle. Oh my gosh, he is just fantastic. Yes. Yes. It was the scene where she wants to enact his curse and she wants to jail cell scene. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I, I love Bobby. He is just so fantastic, and, and I do learn so much from him, but one of my favorite moments was when he grabbed my face. And it was almost as if we were gonna kiss. <laughs> and I just remember feeling like I was hypnotized by him. And something happened to my body, and I just I took this deep breath in. It was almost like I was inhaling him. <laughs> And I just, and it was very sensual, it was like a really sensual moment, and then I smacked his hand away, and it just, there was all these beautiful colors, and there's so much to discover in these scenes when we're, I'm working with him, and I'm working a lot with a lot of people, but, you know, we, we have, our scenes together are really special, I find. Um, we love to play, and he's so, he's, uh, He's just so experienced, and, and so he's been a mentor for me. He's like my big brother on the show. Um, so I, I, that's one of my favorite scenes, and gosh, I can go on for too long, because there's so many beautiful moments, like the, the scene with um, Snow, when the evil queen rips her heart out and puts it then back in her chest. Yeah. Like, I just, I love those moments. These are the, these are the scenes that we're, we're waiting for um, in this uh, season, is sitting at the seance table, and Snow and Regina have that most beautiful, honest conversation, and they just have it out, and those are the moments that we're, we want to see that are not in the original stories, but have become, our, it's our characters, These are this is the show we're writing, and I just, I just love it, I love it, and I am beyond the best. Um, beyond. I never imagined playing this part, and I'm fucking playing this part. Favorite scene? Yeah. Um, I don't really have a favorite scene, but I just have a favorite episode, and it was second star to the right, and of season two, and I love that because it was my first opportunity to bring Wendy to life, and she just had such a bubbliness and energy to her, and I just love that. And obviously, in the third season, she's not quite the same. You know, she's been in a cage for quite a while. <laughs> I don't think you're going to be the same after that. But um, yeah, I love second start of the ride. It was when I got to work with Dylan, who's a lovely guy, and uh, I got to fly, which was really, really fun. So yeah. <laughs> You know, for me, I've been really lucky too because, uh, you know, the dudes have really written me some cool shit. <laughs> and that's the thing, like, I think for me, like, the, the, my memories, I mean, if I were to go, I have a lot of great scenes. Obviously, any part of that dreamy episode for me was, like, super cool, you know? Um, to get to play kind of a romantic character after 30 years in the business being like a, well, I don't know, some sort of, like, a, guy who never gets the chick, you know? <laughs> uh, and that romantic storyline was a payoff for me as an actor, because, you know, it felt like, in the scene, it was the, it was not the dreamy episode, but it was the one where I meet Snow White. 
And we're both in jail because we're in love. And we're fucked because we fell in love. <laughs> and then we sort of bond. We don't like each other, you know, at first. And then there's the scene when she's now had her heart busted and there's this wards waiting to take her home, right? And it's the scene that we have on this road and they lit it so beautifully. And our crew is just amazing. Our DP, Steve Jackson, he knows how to light. And it was just a beautiful scene and you could just feel it was evocative. And I have this line to her where she's gonna take this potion and wipe out her memory. And I say to her, you know, I, you know, I, I, I need my pain because it makes me who I am, it makes me grumpy, you know? As if like, um, you know, and it's, it's a beautiful moment for me as an artist because it's like, dude, I have a heart. And I'm a, I'm a crusty fucker because of that. <laughs> you know? And it sets you up. It sets me up for the rest of time. Because I've established it with you guys that really has got, there's something underneath it. So then the next time they give me like, oh, she could have had a monkey baby. You know? <laughs> Is that true? Do you like monkeys? I actually don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Jason, before we get to Jason, my favorite scene is where I get to see you again. Uh, and that you're not dead. That you're not a dead man. Yeah, I was really nervous when I turned into a monkey because I'm like, am I ever coming back? <laughs> So I, I, was, I was nervous. I'm like, I, I really hope they write me back in, and uh, and I was I was really sweating it for a bit. Uh, God, that rent needs to get paid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I want to be on the show. Um, my favorite scene was when I got picked up by the monkey, uh, running towards the Storybrooke town line, uh, and uh, chasing that turkey. Um, and when I got picked up there, that, I, again, it's all about the flying. Like, we love to fly, and we like to do our own stunts. But the cool thing about this scene was um, they, they rigged me up in the harness, they have a crane, and they put the $100,000 camera on in front of me, and they go, just run as fast as you can towards that $100,000 camera. And we got you. We got you. Oh, really? And that's, and that's what they had to do. So I, I run as fast as I can towards the camera, and thank God they, they had me. They told you to do it. If anything went wrong, it's not on you. Exactly. Um, but the camera would have been destroyed if I had it. Like, I would have been gone. So that was my favorite scene, but it was also my worst favorite scene, least favorite scene, because I hate running. I mean, I mean that, that's fitness. So I'm like, hey, hey, that was great. I'm like, oh, awesome. Let's do it again. <laughs> Let's do it again. And, and Sean's like, Jay, how are you doing, man? <laughs> like, Sean's like, Jay, how are you, are you doing? Are you doing okay? Yeah, yeah, Sean, I got this. I got this, buddy. Two days I can't walk after. <laughs> Crazy. You know, they do have oxygen available. <laughs> All right, let's open it up. Questions, come on down to that mic. Please, please walk to your next destination to get there. There's some, there's some water right there. Okay. Please state your name and the purpose of your question. My name is Wesley, and um, I'd like to say something before I ask my question. Uh, this is to um, Miss um, Peria. Once upon a time, as the evil queen, but I would say you do really good as Melissa said. There's time travel done now, so you never know. Well, if this is might be her in the future, come back and who knows? I say her one. <laughs> My question is to Paria again. Uh, uh, do you like being 
evil queen more, or do you like being a mayor more? It's a very, very question. And it's, it's a difficult one to answer because I really enjoy playing both. Um, I get, sometimes when, the, if I'm playing the mayor for too long, I really start to miss the evil queen. And if I'm playing the evil queen for too long, I start to miss the mayor. So, um, it, it, we have a nice balance, but, um, I'm ready to be evil again. <laughs> I'm ready to be evil again. Not so, uh, but that, no, no, but no, I think they've set up for it, so. Yeah. I know. Um, but I will say, I prefer the Evil Queen's costumes. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my questions. You've had probably the most expensive wardrobe on, on the show. What is your favorite costume that, that you have worn? That's always tough. Oh, well, let's see, the one I can breathe in. <laughs> uh, I love. There are two, and I've seen them. I saw them yesterday, actually. Uh, those red velvet. Yeah. That okay. red Heart velvet. Is if you're wearing it, stand up. Yes. Heart is a lonely hunter. When I see you, see Huntsman. And here she is, she's wearing it. That is one of my favorites, and also the. Um, the I saw it today uh, in the Hanson and Gretel episode. And I had that huge, big, like, you know. J-Lo in there. Yeah, there it is. Oh, I love this. This is perfect. Yes, that's my other favorite costume. I like the, the battle armor one because that one is probably the closest to to honoring the original with the crown and the, the, the cowl and everything. That one's pretty cool. Dude, what about the one with the super punchy jack line? <laughs> My mental thing was like, oh my god, I'm just gonna get baited by that cleavage. <laughs> thank, thank, was Wesley? Yeah. Thank you, Wesley. Thank, thank you, you so much. Right. I, we're gonna have to cut the line, I think, where it is if we want to get anywhere near through these questions. Uh, so, let's let her rip. Hi, my name's Samantha. Um, my question is for Rebecca and Lana. As an actress, I get to keep my, my costumes for films, but do they let you keep any of the clothing? Because it's so extensive, that wardrobe. I just, I would love to pick and choose something from that, at least. There's no way Eduardo would let go of any of his creations. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, I love it, it's bad. There's no way. I mean, he would, he would, he would kill us if we took any of those big costumes. Not only that, she's absolutely right, but I, some of my costumes are about $8,000. Yeah. So, unless I have like a really special birthday, <laughs> I don't think I'll be taking it to the Is there, if you could choose one to have, is, is there one that you would It would be one I can probably wear most. <laughs> like, you know, Without the sisters getting into it. Right. You can put on. Which is impossible. I, I, if, if, I could take, me. if I could take any of my costumes, I, when everybody found out who I really was in Storybrooke, I started wearing like leather pencil skirts, <laughs> sexy hats. I could totally walk around New York and just feel really sexy in those. Those I would totally steal and stick in my suitcase. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is, I guess for all of you, if you could choose one of the jobs of the storybook characters, well, who would you choose in line? What if you could pick one of the jobs of, of the regular dentists of storybook? What what job would you pick? Probably a psychologist. I think that would be fun. I think it would be fun to sit there and analyze people. <laughs> for the curse that makes him just unleash everything that he's ever heard. <laughs> and then he, she said this about you. That would be fun. Anyone else? Well, I'd, go, I'd be granny because I like to cook. <laughs> I've got a lot of good specials in my joint. Yeah. I mean, but I also think like it would be fun to be uh, Dr. Hopper because everyone in town is so batshit crazy. <laughs> 
you'd be like the richest man in town. You'd be like, all right, you're next. Ten minutes, next patient. I think Emma Swan being a bounty hunter is pretty cool. That would be yeah. 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 so good in that in that dress, but. <laughs> I've actually dressed up in that little red jacket a few times and maybe that's the only Thank you. Hi, I'm Jessica. I have a theory question for you guys. I know you don't know anything. Have you ever pondered that maybe Blue is the biggest, baddest villain? Blue Fairy? Yes! yes. yes. She's older than Uncle Still Shane. She cries in everybody's life. <laughs> I've questioned her a few times. <laughs> I mean, me too, she screws me over, for sure. She's giving me a few dirty looks, and I know. Keep her buddy and figure both will help you out the second time. She's full on, it's her way or the highway. You know? Like, following, that's the thing about the magic, like the white magic. Like, the dark magic has less rules. Like, to live in the world of the, of the good magic, it seems like there's more rules. Like, you can't mix dwarves and fairies. That made no sense. That was ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brianna, and I was wondering, as someone who works in Vancouver, if you found any differences between the industry in Vancouver and the industry in LA, if you could give any advice to actors who live and work there. I mean, there's jobs in Vancouver, apparently. <laughs> no, I mean, all the film business has left L.A., right? Yeah, there's, there's not, not many really films in L.A. anymore. Yeah. Um, uh, there are, I think there were like three something pilots filming in Vancouver. Do you live in Vancouver? Yeah. I think Vancouver is probably a good place to start because there are so many, you know, one-hour drama shooting in Vancouver now. Um, they tend to hire like maybe the main four, five, six characters out of Los Angeles, but then everybody else that they need to be guest stars on the show is they are doing local hire. So that's a great way to build your resume to do an episode of one show like Arrow or Once Upon a Time, and you can get into those shows there. So you could do try and get some of those in Vancouver, and when you've got a resume, then you can come down to LA and shoot, you know, try and go and get your own show. Right, Um, primarily for Lana, but Sean can jump in this too. <laughs> uh, Entertainment Weekly was talking to Adam and Eddie, and they said that they were discussing the season with Lana and talking about how you were going to have this progression where you were falling in love, and he said, awesome, I'm enjoying falling in love so much, This, I'm having such a great time, and they said, well, you should enjoy it because we are going to destroy you. <laughs> and, we are going to destroy her relationship, but they just kind of trailed off after that point. They didn't say what your reaction was, so I'm curious to know were you like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew a little bit about it, and I didn't want to tell Sean, because they did tell me that, and I... And, uh, you did say to me, we had a conversation, and I was like, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Um, getting into the uh, boyfriend and um, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, do you know what's gonna happen? She says, "Oh, I know something." Um, you know what? I really shouldn't tell you. you know? <laughs> and I thought, at first, I was like, "Oh no, you can't say that. Tell me." But then I realised it was for the best because it's a bit like they say, "Back to the Future." Nobody should know too much about their own future because in real life, none of us knows what's going to happen tomorrow. So it's best to play what's on the page today and. And we just enjoy ripping off each other. One thing I did know that I never told you, I'm going to tell you for not, <laughs> is that they did, they did tell me in Europe in the second or third episode that I did kill Nick Marion. So I, I only... I didn't know who she was. She was a peasant woman. <laughs> And I, and so it was my little secret. And I always, when I would look at him, it was just like this little, you know, it's like the actor slash character secret. And I don't know if anyone, probably no one ever saw it, but it was um, fun to play. 
I didn't know when I joined the show that there was ever going to be a relationship between me and Lana. I just thought I was coming in to be Robin Hood and steal some stuff, give it to the poor, and then stuff away. <laughs> and then when this um, lion tattoo thing came up, um, I was like, oh, uh, oh, I might be her boyfriend soon. So <laughs> that, was, that was kind of exciting and interesting for me. A lot of the day is pixie dust never lies. <laughs> This is true. I mean, what do you think of it? So I, I, I love outlaw queens. That's right, that was your question. Hello, <laughs> yes, yes. I was, I was. I was, I did really enjoy being in love. Um, well, as Regina. Um, I, and Lana, that's different. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I really love that, especially because we've waited so long for her to find happiness. So it, it broke my heart, as I'm sure it did for many of you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Hi, I'm Daniel. Um, and I swear this was my question before all of that. Um, in that penultimate sequence in the finale, when everybody was all mushy and lovey-dovey and macking on each other, um, <laughs> Regina and Robin were the only ones who kissed with tongues. <laughs> You know, if you think kissing with tongues gets you in trouble. <laughs> I don't remember that being tongue. Actually, I don't know Let's roll the footage. <laughs> Pictures don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this point. We keep it pretty PG on the set, but then when we finish, yeah. <laughs> more about comparing like let's say um do you find it surreal watching let's say Snowy Magal and then playing the character with Snow White or playing the evil queen and then watching out the cartoon and then playing her? I'm sorry, could you say that again? Okay. Oh, sorry. sorry. Um my question is about do you find it ironic watching or um do you find it strange watching the Disney version and then playing the once upon a time version of the evil queen? Um no. Because yes. it's like what we said. I, there, for me, there isn't, yes, this, I'm playing this iconic character, but she's so different on our show. And when we were creating her, um, my inspiration was not from the original Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. Actually, my inspiration was going close from, uh, what is it? Help me. What? So that's, that was really, I mean, I, I pulled from so many different places, but not, not from... And you have to, and you actually, this is the thing, people get all crazy, like we've had actors, and, and you know, sometimes they'll be like, why am I, why do I stop here, why am I drinking tea, why am I, because it says it in the script, dummy. <laughs> so your number one job is to do what's in the paper, right? The getting the part or whatever is where maybe they want to refer to what these legendary characters were. But our job is to interpret, you know, Adam and Eddie's vision. And so we literally go from what's on our page. And that was the most amazing thing on the, on the pilot and why we were all very excited is the chance to play two characters, these dualities, the fact that, let's say, Snow, Grumpy, and Charming are the most together characters in the fairy tale world, and the most messed up, dysfunctional ones in the story world. Right? I mean, Josh was a freaking tool. So I'll never forget when the, he was sitting with me when the episode when the curse was lifted initially, and my line to him was, "There goes the tool belt. Has dropped the tool belt." Because he was a total tool, David Nolan, right? And even he admits it. He's like, that was hard. It was a real challenge to play, like, that character. So, you really owe it to the script to respect the original, but our job is to interpret the new. 
And then it's your job as the audience, because we're not acting if you're not watching, right? We're not actually doing our art. We're a crazy person and we're on the Bluetooth. So when you, right, you have to be there to watch. And it's what you think about it. It's how do you feel that it relates to the original? And what do you see? That's our challenge. And when that lines up, then you have 50,000 people in a panel at Spooky Empire. Thank you. My name is Ray. Um, my question actually about something you kind of mentioned. It's about all the stunts that you guys have done. Uh, is there a moment well, for anyone that you felt unsafe or you felt like, oh my god, I'm <laughs> like you were saying with the, with the camera and you're reading and you're like, um, Regina's going to get the what? And you're like, you, know, you just feel like, were you unsafe at any moment or did you feel like they took care of you? There was one scene, you know the, the big fight in the bomb? The rest. With Lana and Max and oh God. That's yeah, the day. That was a really, really good time. See, but we had a bit of a disaster that day. We had two very unfortunate things. One of our crew, we were, it was a big farmland thing, and there was a big hole with water in it, so it just looked like muddy ground. And this hole was filled with cow. <laughs> was walking along and then just went oh. Oh. So, right here and he actually had to climb out covered from head to toe. He, he didn't climb out, he was starting to drown. He was like, what's up? He nearly died. It's pitch difficult to get out of. And so he, he had to go home and take a long shower. And then he, he came back to work. And he had to go to hospital because it's apparently quite dangerous. And then so he thought, oh, we had a bit of a disaster today. Yeah. Scene where Bex flies me and Josh back, and then Colin and um, JJ back. Yeah. Yeah. The, so we do a bit, and then our stunt guys, who are brilliant and brave, come in and you know carrying the crossbow and stuff. If you get pulled back with a wire, my stunt guy, uh, the guy who's my double, the crossbow hit him in the face and, um, and cut his face up real bad. And uh, <laughs> we. We, we went over and we were like, are you okay? And you know, stunt guys are really tough. He's like, yeah, I'm fine, we're fine. Um, and then we were trying to make him feel better, which we shouldn't. We should have just left him alone. But, uh, and then uh, Josh was like, well, that looks like you're going to need stitches. And then Lana came over and goes, oh, you've got a cut there. I've got a cut there. I was like, Lana, we should just okay. <laughs> I need to go to hospital. Stop making me feel better. <laughs> so that day in the barn was uh, a bit of a tough one for, uh, for a few people. I never got scared ever flying on my broomstick, even though I was like 200 feet up the ground. But do you remember the scene where I made Glinda disappear? Yes. Yes. Maybe you'd be happy about getting enchanted for it. And I just went, boom, and she just disappeared. Now, of all the stunts and all the things and all the jumping around, I just went like that. And my shoulder still hurts. <laughs> and when I'm in the shower and I'm doing my hair and I put the stuff, I'm like, ooh, bugger, that hurts. <laughs> and every time I have a shower, I think that Glinda the good way. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's, that's what we like to call karma. <laughs> like, I hurt her and now I'm left with the pain. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nemo Like a Fish. And yeah. That's long. <laughs> it does it. Me and my friend Fabi, who can, Fabi, all of you can make it today because she's a Puerto Rico graduating today. But, um, <laughs> sorry, if I talk a little fast, I'm a little nervous. That's good. Um, so, we wanted to know, well, yeah, um, sorry. Okay. We wanted to know if, uh, how does, how do you think Regina feels about the Lena being dead, even though we're in denial that she's actually dead? That's <laughs> Well, you know, I think she, there are mixed feelings. Uh, there was a line that was originally scripted that they cut out, which was when we were in the jail cell, she turns back, and Regina turns back and looks at Selena and says, it's nice to have family in town. Aww. And they cut it out. Yeah, yeah. And the way I see it is that's still part of how she feels. I think that, you know, she had high hopes for Selena, and she wanted her to come around and have this sort of, you know, revelation, the revelations that Regina has had. 
So I, I think it's, um, <laughs> but, then, but then she's holding that brooch in the, in the mausoleum that she's putting, and then she has a different look on her face. So um, I think she feels she, she's satisfied that she's been able to, you know, evil all this way. Um, I, and I think she's happy that she defeated Zelina, but I think she probably would have liked to have had a sister around. She doesn't have any family, like no blood relatives, they're all dead. <laughs> I mean, it's first, I'm sorry for almost knocking you over, but I'm going to take you over yesterday. <laughs> and second, um, we love the sass, sass that Regina has. Thank you. Yeah. It's a boy, you can sound crazy. I'm Shannon. Um, my question is for Bex. I know we were joking yesterday about how Zelina's too adorable to be dead, so she should come back to life. If she does come back to life next season, what would you want her story to kind of be like? Like, how would she go on? Hmm, that's a really good question. I mean, I think, you know, I love the Evil Queen storyline. I love the fact that, you know, you've had all that backstory and then you've you are evil and then you've come through and it's like I think that the challenge about playing a villain is you just don't always want to be really really pissed off and so I think if if Selena is going to come back you know there needs to be that journey of maybe having that forgiveness but you know then it's also a challenge of how are they write it and then not we just be nice again so honestly I'm not that good of a writer I literally would just have to lie back and think in England and trust that they would make it really exciting and interesting <laughs> Not that good. <laughs> two, we have time for two more questions. So, you and our, our next If you could change one thing about your character, what would it be? Oh. I could go from six inch heels to flats. <laughs> Bunch of, bunch of, bunch of, bunch of. 
All right, we're going to do one with our professional photographers, with you guys right over here. Let's make a bunch of noise for our much fun.